Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. I hope you all had a fantastic weekend as Samsung, the topic of our first story, probably didn't get off their weekend to a very good start after a power outage caused a ton of damage to some of their VNAND memory wafers that could possibly affect prices here in the short term over the coming weeks. And our second story will be concerning ASRock who now officially revealed or teased really their upcoming lineup of gaming graphics cards, which we had talked about in a rumor just a couple of weeks ago. But as I said, we're going to be starting off with Samsung, who on Friday had a power outage at one of their manufacturing facilities in South Korea. This was originally over on the website technews.tw, which is a Taiwanese-based tech news website, as, as the name would kind of really hint at, wouldn't it? But I'm sourcing this over from Anon Tech, who have done the uh, justice and, and the, the done us the pleasure, really, of putting it into English, thankfully, because I, I don't speak Taiwanese, do you? Because I, I, I don't. I'd be lost if this was in Taiwanese. We'd be li relying on Google Translate, and who knows what could happen. I, I don't know. But we're getting off track here. The big thing here is that Samsung had about a 30-minute power outage at their manufacturing facility, which is going to disrupt about 11% of their total production for the month, which comes down to 50 to 60,000 of their VNAND flash memory wafers. So this could actually create some disruption in the market. Maybe we could even see prices fluctuate a little bit over the coming weeks as this 11% of their monthly output actually adds up to 3.5% of the global production of VNAND flash memory. So this could actually, like I said, it could maybe affect prices here in the coming weeks. So if you are in the market for memory right now, uh, definitely keep an eye on things and make sure that they aren't too high, even though RAM prices have been insanely high recently anyway. Um, but this, who knows, this could actually affect uh, some gaming RAM prices for a PC build. Um, they did mention in this article, companies like Samsung who just pushed out their S9 and S9 Plus that they've already kind of fulfilled their order, so they really aren't going to be stacking up on uh, piling, stocking up RAM um, at this point in time, but other manufacturers could later in the year. So this is something we'll just have to keep an eye on, but this should really only affect things kind of in the short term, unlike the RAM prices that we have kind of seen coming up over the last year or so, which has been way bigger. I mean, looking at Corsair Vengeance LPX 16 gigabyte RAM at 3000 megahertz, which is kind of my go-to memory of choice. It's just, it's great. It's actually was a good price to performance memory kit, like when it was kind of in the middle of its life. When, when it first came out, it was more expensive. As you'll see here over on Camel, 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 um, this keeps track of the prices over on Amazon for one specific listing where it's currently at $205. When the DDR4 memory first launched, it did have some pretty high prices. It was selling for about $160, which was quite high, but that eventually stabilized and it was selling for around $80 to $100, which I had bought several kits of this at. And for $100, it was an excellent price for 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory at three gigahertz. But now you can see it's actually coming up to record highs at over $200. It had even been as high as $220 at some point back in like around January, it looks like. So yeah, really, really high prices here on the memory. And hopefully this doesn't really affect it any further than what it already has been over the past year with RAM shortages in general. But our next story is concerning ASRock, which has now introduced their Phantom Gaming graphics card series that they posted a teaser video on where we didn't really get a whole lot of information other than it's going to be very unpredictable. Hopefully these aren't going to be produced just for miners. We'll have to wait and see on that, but they do look like they're going to have a custom cooling solution on there. And we did get a very brief glimpse of the one single eight pin, the one single, yeah, the single eight pin power connector on the graphics card. So since we, in the rumors at least, we had thought that this was going to be AMD based graphics cards, what we're probably looking at here is an RX 580 or maybe an RX 570. That's probably going to be the area that they're going into as, like I said, the rumors had suggested they were going to be sticking with just AMD. So that looks, you know, that could line up with, like I said, the 580 or the 570. Uh, over on video cards, they had a couple of screenshots that they grabbed from it here. So you can see the eight pin power connector on there and kind of an outline of the dual fan heatsink on here. And it is called the Phantom Gaming line. So I guess it is a gaming graphics card. Now, it doesn't really seem like they're, at least in name, trying to say that this is just for miners. But yeah, it very well likely could 
be just for minors. Uh, and last thing today, just kind of a, a little bit of a funny, honestly, that I came across this morning when I was browsing over on the AMD subreddit. Someone had posted this up and it gave me quite the laugh as Newegg Canada right now is selling a refurbished, mind you, Vision Tech Radeon HD 5870. This is so old that it is an ATI graphics card and they are selling it for the rock bottom price of $330 but it's on sale so grab it before the sale ends on Sunday this is on sale from its starting price of $600 um, by the way when this card first came out it was selling for $399 and now it's selling for $330 which they are calling a sale for a refurbished graphics card like come on but you know you know what all jokes aside, though, at least Newegg is doing their due diligence to try to sort of combat miners in the market because they are limiting it, limiting it to just 20 per customer. That's right, just 20 per customer. So they're really, like I said, they are really doing their best effort to try to make sure that the, the gamers are the ones getting these graphics cards, you know, not not the miners. And definitely limiting them to 20 per customer. That's really going to put a dent in it if you're actually stupid enough to go out and spend $330 on a refurbished HD 5870. But hey, it's got an ATI logo on it, so that's got to have some, you know, merit for for posterity's sake. It's kind of cool. All right, but anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. I just found that kind of amusing, so I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, please let me know your thoughts, as always, down in the comments below on today's news stories. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, don't forget to leave a like on it down below and subscribe. If you're not already, and if you have been here for a while, you can always hit the notification bell so you never miss a moment of content right here on the channel. And I will catch you guys tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.